In this video, what we'll do is talk about probably the most important part of the financial planning, and that is the actual business logic of the income statement. What is going on in the numbers that we think of as revenue and expenses? Why is that relevant, and what can one learn from that? Most important to remember is the financials are a way of translating all of the operating activity, all of the thinking that one's done about the product and how the product will work and the technology and how the technology will work and the services and systems and all of those things and how they will work and translate that into dollars and cents. Translate that into something that investors and others can look at and say, how do I make return on my investment? That's really what we're thinking about. Number one and most important is to think about the top line. You don't just make up numbers and say, I'm going to have a million dollars in revenue, or I'm going to have a thousand dollars the first month, or two thousand dollars the first month. You have to actually describe the logic that justifies your top line revenue. You have to talk about the problem that you're solving. You have to talk about what you're doing to provide that solution. And then you have to determine what the size of the market for that solution actually is, how many units you're going to sell, and what the potential price for those units might be. That is your unit sales forecast. So somewhere in the business planning documentation, you have to talk about how many units you expect to sell the first month, the second month, the third month, the fourth month, of your various products, or various um, different ways of putting together units of something that you sell, a service, if you're a taxi cab, it might be how many rides you have. If you're a rental, it might be how many units or how many uh, tenants you have. What is the unit that you're selling and how many of them are you going to sell for each time period? That makes the business real because these are the things you have to make and sell or provide the service and sell. You are simply in the financials translating that already convincing story about what you're actually doing as a business you're translating that into dollars and cents. And the way that's done, of course, is through the price. So you have to also have a strong story about your pricing strategy per unit, how many you're going to, you know how many you're going to sell, what are you going to price them for. And this is depending also upon your distribution channel. You may sell them wholesaler, wholesale to a distributor, a distributor. You may sell them directly over the internet, but you have to be crystal clear about that because what the end user pays is only what you receive if you're selling direct to the end user customer. So you know how many units you're selling and then you price them and the part of that price that you get is your gross revenue. You multiply the price per unit times the number of units and that becomes your total revenue and you should have that by month, the first year, uh, by annually after that. It's a good idea also to be thinking about quarterly for the first year and the second year. Obviously, for the first year, it's redundant with the monthly statement. It's just a sum, three months summed up. But that helps look at what the second, what the quarterly look in the second year might look like. You can see how you're growing quarter over quarter through the first year and the second year. And then you have annual for the third year and maybe the fourth year and that sort of thing. What you're essentially doing is showing that you have a value proposition. You're solving a problem that people are going to be willing to pay for. And what that turns into in terms of the amount of money that flows into your business through customers. This is a narrative. It's a story. It has to make sense and it has to be believable. Nothing else matters if you don't convince people that the revenue is going to come through the door. Okay? Once you've done that, the next step is to decide how much it costs to deliver each of those units. You know a price. Say so you know you're going to get $100 for a unit. What does it cost you just to deliver that piece of equipment or that product or that service? You have to pay, um, say you're a delivery service, you have to pay the driver a certain amount of money. You have to pay for gasoline. How much does just that cost? You could not get the revenue at all if you didn't pay this price in order to have the product or service available to the customer. That is your cost of goods sold. What is that? You figure that out. You clarify it, you tell the story, and you justify it. And then, of course, you multiply that times the number of units every month, every quarter, every year, just like before. And that gives you your cost of goods sold. Don't forget to include all the pieces you put together, all the overheads associated with assembling all of those pieces. If you have distribution costs, you have driving things around and trucks and delivering them to warehouse. That's all part of your cost of goods sold. 
as are warranty costs. You might have some returns every now and then. One of your products doesn't work. Say you're a bakery, uh, you make the wrong cake. You have to absorb that cost, and that should also be in your cost of goods sold. Some sort of a percent for failure, percent returns, whatever. It can also be absorbed in your cost of goods sold. You subtract cost of goods sold from your revenue, and you get your gross profit. This is probably the single most important number you have in a business because if gross profit is not large enough, and a nice rule of thumb is at least 50%. In other words, if something you sell something for $100, you're looking to be building it and then having it on the shelf ready to sell for about $50. That is, you make 50% in gross profit. It varies by industry, and don't hold me to that, but it's essentially a rule of thumb. If you don't have something like that, you have to really understand uh, where you, how you're going to make your profit, because what you're effectively doing is you have to build your business around that 50% that's left. The gross profit is how you build your business. That's how you hire people. That's how you have revenue. That's how you do marketing. That's how you develop your new products and your new services. So starting with your gross profit, which essentially is the seed money that keeps your business going. It's what flows in and helps you grow. Without that, you got nothing. You take out your expenses. This is the people that you hire that aren't directly related to delivering the product or service. It's any new product development you have. If you're going to go and look for a new location to sell or a new product or the next generation product or service, you have to spend time and energy on that. That comes out of your gross profit, as does any marketing and sales. Sometimes this gross cost of goods sold is called cost of sales. Don't mistake that for sales expense. Cost of sales means the cost of putting the product together. It's the same as cost of goods sold. But sales expense is different. That's what you pay the people that sell. If you have commissions, you have to pay commissions. You have to pay royalty fees, something like that, to someone. Those are um, not royalty fees, referral fees. Those are uh, sales expense. Uh, advertising, uh, put, put ads in the paper, your website, all of that might be marketing expense. That all comes out of the the expenses that are that are operating expenses after you've already taken out your cost of goods sold. Then you have your general administrative expense, which you have to figure out as well. Your legal expense, your accounting expense, um, any other location leases, those sorts of things come out from that from that perspective. Once you've taken out all the things you need to keep your business, to think about the future, to plan to to operate, to hire the people, to pay the people, to give them salaries, give them bonuses, all that sort of thing. Uh, <clears throat> all of your operating expenses, once you take those away, what's left is your earnings before interest and taxes. This is your operating profit. In other words, this is the amount of money that your business generates before you pay third parties. And by third parties, I mean banks or investors. Interest goes to banks. Investors get, get um, dividends, and then to government, which is taxes. So EBIT is operating income. It's what your business generates in terms of cash, but you have to pay other stakeholders, government, investors, bankers, and that comes out, and below that number is your net income. Right? So those are your, that is your income statement logic. Remember, it's what happens over a period of time. So you have monthly statements, quarterly, monthly for the first year, you have quarterly statements, and you have annual statements. And from that, you can see whether your business is growing on the revenue side, how your expenses are keeping in line with your gross margin, and then how your cost of sales is, is being supported. If your cost of sales is becoming an increasing percent of your, of your revenue, in other words, your gross margin is declining, that means you're either spending too much on the product, you have too much waste or too much warranty, or you have no price support and you have to under, be undermining your pricing or cutting your prices, but your costs don't go away. You still have the same cost of goods sold, but your prices go down so your margin declines. So those are the sorts of things that you look at. Okay? We'll continue in a little more detail in the next um, discussion when we'll talk about the cash flow elements of this financial planning, as well as the balance sheet. And that will be in our next 